Hey guys, I'm Ted, here to give you another fast fact. And for today's fast fact, we're going to discuss the legal doctrine of partis sequitur ventrum, or the right of the womb. And now, partis was uh, enacted by the Virginia House of Burgesses, the colonial legislature of the colonial Virginia, uh, back in 1662. And what partis did was it, it was designed to sort of stave off freedom suits by slave women uh, who were impregnated by their owners. Um, be before slavery became uh, a legal doctrine in Virginia, it was uh, a useful tool. It was a, a very popular way of, attain of attaining your freedom of breaking your indentured servitude contract to simply get pregnant by, your, by the man who held your indentured contract or his son or another family member and simply go to the courts and say, hey, this guy impregnated me. Uh, violated my contract, and you will simply be uh, you will simply have your contract breaking uh, broken that way. Uh, what what uh, Partis did was Partis removed the uh, the prospect of that for slave women. Uh, what it did was it specifically targeted uh, African and Native women. Uh, Happy discussed in our previous lectures. Uh, Native women were also taken captive and enslaved in colonial America. Uh, after the Powhatan War, the Pequot, and Matacom or King Philip's War, large numbers of Natives were taken as slaves, majority sent to the West Indies, but a number of them kept uh, as slaves in the United States. What, uh, what parties did was it, was, uh, it ensured that the, the mark of slavery would only be passed on to non-whites, since English women could not be enslaved and therefore they could not pass on the inherited status of slavery. Um, it was designed really to free slave masters from having to acknowledge paternity and therefore provide for the child. In English common law, a father had to support a child, his child, and also provide that child with the opportunity to learn a skill. This new Virginian law circumvented that. It allowed the slave master to exploit both his progeny and his female slaves. Uh, this law legitimated the rape of slave women by slave masters and their sons and plantation overseers. It also had the distinction of restricting children born to a slave woman to perpetual slavery. By deviating from the English common law and not forcing a father to claim paternity, uh, what it did was it allowed that child to grow up with no legal recognition and really sort of uh, restricted that child from being able to obtain any other prospects other than slavery unless his father manumitted or freed him. Um, thusly, mixed race children of the slave owner and the slave uh, female were confined to, to slavery, confined to slave quarters. Um, what Partis really did, the, the Latin legacy of Partis, was that slavery now became a racial caste in the United States. And there you guys have it. That's your fast fact. I hope you found it uh, enlightening. enlightening. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, and as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think about the, the introduction of Partis. As always, I'm Ted, and I'll see you guys later.